Now, count on two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 at 5. Confirmed cases of the coronavirus at Berkeley County's detention center. Breaking tonight, now the sheriff is working to contain the virus before an outbreak. Plus, the first steps towards getting the state back to normal are right here on the waterways. Boats back on the water, police out patrolling ahead of what promises to be a busy weekend. And the funds to protect your paycheck are running dry. They probably didn't get all the funding that they had hoped to. Now, small businesses barely keeping their heads above water are calling on another round of relief from the feds. But first, as storm cleanup continues across the low country, another threat could be approaching. Let's get out to the low country's chief meteorologist, Rob Fowler, for the latest. All right, certainly coming off Monday, anxiety is high. We're all anxious about what potentially could happen later in the weekend. Right now, I just want you to take a deep breath and enjoy your Friday, enjoy your Saturday, and most of Sunday, as a lot of this is not going to happen until later in Sunday. Looking pretty good, the radar trends. we got some showers to the north, even snow showers. But what we're keeping an eye on is what's developing out here in Texas. That's our next weather maker, and we're going to kind of follow that across the deep south with the potential for severe weather, generally out of a one to five scale. Part of our area has a two out of five threat for severe weather. Other parts a three out of five. The timing in the track is uncertain. That will be very key and what kind of potential severe weather we do see. At the very least, it looks like this is a soaker in terms of rainfall. Now, Storm Prediction Center issuing their outlook. This is taking us into Saturday and into Sunday. And you can see right now we're an enhanced risk. That's a three out of five, generally from most of Colleton County South Bay. Down, but the immediate Charleston area, most of the area is in a slighter risk, kind of a two out of five. So kind of breaking it down, this is what we're looking at. We're in your slight risk. Generally, scattered severe thunderstorms are possible and enhanced risk. And that's where we were on Monday. Numerous severe thunderstorms are possible. Not saying we're going to have a repeat of Monday because there's still a lot that we have to watch over the next 24 to 48 hours. But we will watch. We will continue to track this storm as the evolution continues. And we'll have another update coming your way in just a few minutes. A breaking news, state health officials have just released new numbers on the COVID-19 pandemic in the low country. There were 167 new confirmed cases in South Carolina. Yeah, that brings us up to nearly 4,100 cases in this state. Seven more people have died, including one person in Berkeley County. And local hospitals are also giving us new numbers. News choose Hannah Powers joins us live from the medical district to break them all down. Hannah. Sophia, since Wednesday, Trident has had 35 new patients test positive for COVID-19. That now brings their total up to 264 patients who have tested positive for the virus. We're also sad to report that they have had one patient pass away. Meanwhile, Roper St. Francis Healthcare is only reporting one new confirmed COVID-19 case. Earlier today in a press conference, Charleston Mayor John Tecklenburg said our low country hospitals are prepared to handle more cases. University in fact reported that they believe they can handle along with our other health care providers uh, the number of cases that DHEC and that MUSC now project projects to occur in our region. Hospitals are implementing several new tests to have faster and more accurate testing capabilities. Reporting live in downtown Charleston, I'm Hannah Powers. Count on two. And Justin, MUSC also released the latest breakdown of their numbers. They've confirmed 425 positive cases of the virus. At least five people of those are still in the hospital, and they've tested nearly 7,500 people. We have some major headlines in the fight against the pandemic here in the Low Country. Mayor John Tecklenburg unveiled his three step plan for the reopening of the city of Charleston. Here in the state, public boat ramps and landings are now open, and Berkeley County Sheriff's Office has announced 10 confirmed cases of COVID 19 at the Hill Finkley County Detention Center. And that's where we start our team coverage with News 2's Raymond Owens, who's live in Berkeley County. Raymond, what's being done to fight the virus at this detention center? Well, the breakdown looks like this. Eight of these cases are detention center officers. Two of them are inmates, and they've all tested positive for COVID-19, the coronavirus. Now, there are also four additional inmates that have been tested, but their results have not yet been received. One of the eight detention center officers did test positive weeks ago, and uh, she has not been at the jail since March. 
All of these other cases have been tested in the past week or so. The sheriff just announced these new cases this afternoon. Sheriff Dwayne Lewis sent us a statement saying, quote, the health and overall well-being of our staff and inmates is crucial and will always remain our utmost concern. Although this pandemic is fluid, we can and we will do whatever we can to slow the spread of the virus. The sheriff's office has distributed personal protective equipment to all personnel to assist them in remaining healthy. Now, you may remember a couple weeks ago, the sheriff's department actually had a company come in that specializes in deep cleaning uh, jails and other public safety facilities. That happened here at Hill, Fink uh, Hill Finkley, like I said, uh, not too long ago. They tell us they do have procedures in place to try and mitigate any potential ad additional spread of this virus. Live in Monk's Corner, I'm Raymond Owens. Count on two. Public boat ramps and landings have reopened across the state as of 12 o'clock this afternoon as part of the latest order from Governor Henry McMaster. News 2's Riley Benson joins us from the Wapu Cut public boat landing where boaters are wasting no time. Public boat landings and ramps opened earlier today to allow access to waterways. And you see this as one of the first steps towards reopening the state. Yeah, I think it was a good call. There's, there's nothing more socially distant that I can think of other than, you know, being out on a boat. So it's good for everybody, good for the kids. And these people that already went up, we all was waiting on a 12 o'clock shot. But I came this morning at 11 just to check and I saw a few cars and I said, thank you, Lord. Albert Deacon says opening the boat landings will bring a much needed boost for people looking to get out of the house. It's mean a whole lot to all of us, the fishermen, the guys that have people coming from out of town that some that can't get here. We are so proud for Matheson to open up this landing. Charleston City Police Chief Luther Reynolds says local enforcement agencies will be actively making sure social distancing is being practiced. We support that. We're going to have a presence with the county sheriffs, uh, with Mount Pleasant, with North Charleston, the city, police, fire. We're going to have boats out all over the place. Chief Reynolds says it's crucial to continue following coronavirus guidelines while on the water. Adhere to these social distancing expectations and requirements. Do not ruin a good thing. This is a good thing that the, the ramps are being opened back up. Meanwhile, back on the waters, the boaters say this is a sign of hope. I mean, the experts are going to tell us when, but uh, I think it's a step, you know, closer to where we all want to be. Um, I still think we've got a long way to go. Law enforcement agencies across the Lowcountry, including the Mount Pleasant Police Department, say they will be increasing their water patrols, especially through the weekend, to make sure people are continuing to follow coronavirus restrictions. In Charleston, Riley Benson, Count on Two. And you can see additional statement on CountOnTwo.com of DNR's official statement. Charleston's mayor has unveiled his three-step plan to reopening the city when the pandemic begins to wind down. John Tecklenburg gave the update this afternoon. The first step, red, is where we are right now, shutting down to stop the spread of this virus. Step two is yellow, slowly reopening businesses and agencies while staying socially distanced. And then, the mayor says, we'll be in the green economic recovery. But before we get there, he says, several conditions have to be met. First, we must see evidence that the rate of infection in our community is low. Secondly, there must be a robust public health infrastructure with strong testing and contract, contact tracing capabilities in place. And thirdly, there must be sufficient medical infrastructure and personnel and equipment to handle any surge that would occur with the disease. Mayor Tecklenburg says two of those three conditions are nearly met, a slowed rate of infection and an increase in medical infrastructure, but the testing infrastructure still needs some work. And Roper St. Francis says it will reopen some of its surgical procedures starting next week. On Wednesday, the health care system says they'll open back up some surgeries and allow certain visitors to pre-operation areas. All this while staying vigilant against COVID-19. I spent some time with former governor and U.S. Congressman Mark Sanford today. He made a brief run for president on a platform of deficit, debt and federal spending. Sanford says he knows people are devastated financially because of this crisis, but warns more stimulus equals more crippling debt. So I, I think that unfortunately we're born for Peter to pay for Paul. And when uh, the, the bill comes due, which again is not in our grandchildren's lifetime or in our, 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 our kids' lifetime, it's in our lifetime, we're going to be facing a much greater financial storm. 
Tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll hear what Mr. Sanford says about the people this crisis hurts the most financially. Again today, we are expecting to hear from the president and how the nation is responding to this crisis at 5.30. As soon as today's briefing from the task force in Washington gets underway, we will join it live. For more information on this outbreak, including the latest local, state, and federal announcements, as well as a look at a breakdown by the number of cases, you can always head to our website. That's countdown2.com. Hi, here's Count on 2 traffic on a Friday afternoon. There have been some accidents around town earlier in the day. Things are pretty quiet out there right now. Certainly 526 Clements Ferry Road. Not much going on there. The traffic is moving. Savannah Highway from light to light. We're navigating through. Not much moving downtown Charleston. And the Rabbitell Bridge coming over east of the Cooper. We've got pretty much smooth sailing. Even Mount Pleasant, which does get congested, is looking pretty good. It's an 18-minute drive downtown to Somerville on the westbound side of 26. 18 minutes westbound 526 Mount Pleasant to West Ashley. Here is a live look at mile marker 28. This is Long Point Road. There was an accident slowing things down earlier this afternoon. That has since been cleared up, and we are moving nicely. The remains of a fallen Charleston County deputy will be escorted to the Charleston International Airport tomorrow. Deputy Jeremy Ledoux was on patrol in West Ashley Monday when another vehicle collided into his patrol car on Savannah Highway. Both Deputy Ledoux and the other driver, Quamaine Mitchell, were transported to an area hospital with life-threatening injuries where they later died. The deputy's remains will be flown back to his home state of California for a private burial. Next on News 2. The funds to protect your paycheck are running out. What officials say you can do now if you're unable to receive assistance from the Small Business Administration. Plus, cleanup continues from those deadly tornadoes across South Carolina earlier this week. How much it could cost one city coming up. And here's a look at our weather artist of the day. This is the 5 o'clock edition. We take you back over to St. Timothy's Children's Center. Ethan Mears with a big, beautiful sunshine. We want to see that all weekend long, Ethan. So thank you very much. Kids, you can always draw us a weather picture, then send it on in. Two ways to do that via the mail. 210 West Coleman Boulevard, Mount Pleasant, 29464. Or email weatherartist at countonto.com. Ethan Mears, St. Timothy's Children's Center in Goose Creek. You're our weather artist of the day.